for this part, my goal will be to um, obtain um, the force that the driver needs to apply at the pedal point here and to draw the variation of this force during the motion of the mechanism. So the first thing I'm going to do is to change a little bit the way the model is constrained. Uh, right now the model is constrained uh, in a position that represents an assembly condition. You can see that the dimension rod length here is locked. Uh, so this uh, rod length dimension is usually a, a manufacturing dimension. Um, so I'm going to unlock it and uh, I'm going to now lock the dimension that we have here which is called uh, travel. So I'm going now to drive the mechanism using the dimension that uh, changes the travel of the, of the piston. So as you can see if I change the travel measurement um, it uh, makes the piston move in the hydraulic uh, cylinder and it makes all the, all the system to actually, uh, to actually move. So the first step in this analysis will be to calculate um, the force that is applied on the, on the, the rod by the piston due to the hydraulic pressure that we have here in the cylinder. So to analyze that, we have actually uh, created a curve. We have actually uh, imported actually a curve from Excel. So we have uh, in Excel here a curve that was just uh, copied and pa pasted from another uh, Excel file with uh, pressure data here on the first column and travel data on the um, sorry uh, travel data on the first column and uh, pressure data on the second column. Uh, so we have imported this curve and uh, it was imported in the in the sketch of uh, Inventive as uh, the curve that we see here. So there is a function that allows to quickly import this uh, data as numeric uh, curve data in Inventive. So you can see we have uh, the T parameter here on the uh, horizontal dimension. So for example, if travel equals 13, uh, if I enter a value of 13, uh, I'm going to have 12.5 uh, newtons per square millimeters of pressure. If I put uh, T equals uh, 24, I have the same value as in Excel, which is uh, 12 uh, newtons per square millimeters. So the T variable and the pressure variable uh, we can find them here, here in the list of variables, T variable and pressure variable. What I'm going to do now is simply to say that uh, the T variable of the, of the curve should be the same as uh, our uh, travel variable in the assembly. So the travel variable I have here, I'm simply going to uh, unlock, uh, no, I'm not going to unlock it, I'm going to unlock the T variable on the curve and uh, in an equation I'm going to say t uh, is equal to uh, simply uh, travel. So this will uh, create the relationship between the, um, the travel variable of the assembly and the t variable on the curve. So I think you can see when I change the travel variable in the assembly the point is now going along the pressure curve. Okay, so now uh, based on that information it's possible for us to uh, to get uh, the pressure variable from the curve. So we have the pressure variable here and uh, this pressure is in newtons per square millimeters so we can use it to make uh, calculation of the force that is applied on the on the piston. So here we have the diameter of the piston, uh, this dimension, uh, diameter piston, so I'm going to call it uh, dp for example. So we can enter an equation that says uh, the surface of the piston s will be equal to uh, p 
multiplied by uh, dp uh, exponent uh, 2 and uh, this will be uh, divided by 4 to calculate the surface of the piston ok, apparently there is a small uh, ok, I forgot to enter the, uh, the divided sign ok, so now we have S that is calculated and uh, based on this information about S it's possible to calculate the force uh, the force uh, that is applied on the piston so I'm going to create it in uh, red color in uh, blue color, sorry so I'm going to say on the piston we are going to have a force applied in this way uh, this force is going to be uh, parallel to the main axis of the cylinder um, I'm going to say that uh, the value is going to be uh, hydraulic force, HF and um, we can say in an equation that uh, uh, HF, HF is going to be equal to um, pressure uh, divided by uh, the surface, S Okay, so now the force is um, the force is calculated. So uh, it gives a force value that is uh, very small. I think it was because the pressure value that we had uh, was uh, very small. So just for making it a little bit bigger, I'm going to multiply its value by 1,000. Going to say we have 28.54 uh, newtons of force applied to the rod. So, uh, this force that we have calculated, of course, in a real example, we have to define the correct uh, pressure value uh, and correct calculation so that the force gets correctly calcul calculated. So now, what's interesting is that uh, when we move the pedal, we can see the, the force value changing in function of the pressure that is applied on the, on the piston. So now we are going to use this uh, input uh, hydraulic force as the starting point for the calculation of uh, the force applied at the tip of the pedal. So I'm going to say, first thing in the pivot here between the rod and the, um, and the pedal, I'm going to say that I have uh, one force that is going to be uh, equal and in the same direction as the uh, hydraulic force. I will hide as well the, the dimension names. Uh, then, uh, at the pedal point, we can represent the force that we want to calculate. So maybe before I do that, I will change the color of the forces. So at the pedal point, I will create a, a force here applied at this point. Uh, it's going to be perpendicular to uh, this. Okay. And um, then, uh, next step will be in the pivot that we have here at the top. We want to represent the fact that uh, we are going to have uh, a contact force between the pedal and the ring. And also we are going to have a contact point. So I delete the constraint that was present in the past. Because this constraint was uh, constraining exactly concentric the... Um, the all diameter with the pin diameter. Here I want to say that we have a contact, so I'm creating a tangency contact like this. So now we have uh, one contact on uh, one side and on the other side we actually have a gap. So, uh, okay, uh, the system does not know where is the contact point because so far we did not create the representation of the force. So I'm, I'm representing here the force. Uh, I'm going to say that this force has to be perpendicular to the diameter. Okay, and uh, I am also going to associate to this force uh, also uh, a friction force. So I'm clicking here on the mu button and I'm clicking on the normal force so that we create uh, a friction force as well. So, in the list of variables, when we have created this uh, friction force, I think you can see uh, 
Well, first in the sketch, there is this uh, friction force that was created. And uh, in the list of variables, we have the friction variable that uh, was created. Um, it's equal nominally to uh, 0 0.2 by default. And uh, it's possible also to associate a tolerance on the friction. We can put a tolerance of uh, plus or minus 0 0.5 on the friction. We can also rename it. We can rename it uh, friction uh, pivot, for example. Okay. So, uh, okay, I'm going also to define an angle between the force and uh, one of the axes in the system and uh, going to change the value of this angle so that the force is uh, properly uh, orientated. So I'm going to orientate it like this. Okay, and um, now we are going to uh, do the force calculation, calculation of forces that are applied on the pedal. So, when we do a force calculation, we need to unlock the things we want to calculate. So first I unlock the force in the pivot here. I unlock the uh, driver force. Uh, and I'm going to say sum in X and Y of uh, this force, this, was, this force, this one, and this one. Uh, should be equal to zero and in the next step I'm going to unlock the angle of the force in the pivot and to say the sum of moments uh, of all the forces I'm selecting uh, should be zero in uh, for example the pivot point so when this is done uh, you can see that the forces that we have created become all uh, deduced so they are all calculated in function of the uh, hyd hydraulic hydraulic uh, input pressure. So when we move uh, the piston using the travel variable, we see the forces uh, uh, varying during the, the movement. Okay, so um, of course it's possible to go in any position. It's possible to go on the uh, driver force here and to do a tolerance stack on this uh, force value. So when we do that, we get the tolerance stack of the force um, itself. So it's really a tolerance stack on a, on a physical parameter, which is the force parameter. And we get also some physical contributors. So uh, the last thing I'm going to uh, present here is the fact that uh, it's possible in Excel to uh, create a curve that will give us the variation of the force according to the variation of the uh, travel. So I can say, for example, I want to create uh, a new group here in the mat part. Uh, I will call the group uh, curve. And uh, I will say the force has to be part of the curve group and the travel has to be part of the curve group. So now if I go on the curve group, you see in this group I have only the travel and the force. I can rename the force, uh, for example, F pedal. Okay, and uh, now I'm going to say uh, I want to do a tolerance in motion study. So I want to analyze, um, I want to record in this curve uh, for the contributor, which is the travel variable, only the nominal value. And for the analyzed dimensions, I will record the nominal value, uh, the upper worst case, lower worst case, plus 3 sigma and minus 3 sigma. So I click on record, and uh, the record is starting in Excel. And then I can do a step-by-step -step variation uh, from 0 0.1 until, uh, let's, say, uh, let's say, 60. And uh, I will include a step size of uh, 0 0.5 uh, millimeters. So I start the movement, and uh, as you can see, at uh, every step of the movement, the system is uh, recalculating all the forces. It's doing a tolerance analysis on the force, and it is placing the result of the tolerance analysis uh, in the in the Excel report. So. It could not reach 60 because 60 was a too large value, so it has stopped before uh, to the latest possible step. So now I can uh, stop the curve.
current uh, analysis and uh, based on this uh, analysis it's now possible in Excel to uh, create a, a curve that will show the variation of the pedal force according to the um, to the pedal travel. So it could be possible to use this type of step-by-step uh, step by step analysis uh, after we have uh, reversed the friction in the pivot and uh, so to reverse the friction in the pivot we simply need to click here on the friction force and click on reverse Okay, so it recalculates uh, all the forces and uh, if we draw another curve using this uh, new orientation of the friction we would draw the uh, hysteresis curve um, of the force that is applied on the pedal uh, according to the, the way the pedal moves whether it is from top to down or up to uh, or top or down to up.